So to help y'all out, I'm gonna have I'm gonna explain to you what is happening in your brains when you struggle to read. Why are you not comprehending what you are reading? To do that, I have two brains up here on the board. All right, and if only we had two pinkies as well. Mm. Is he gonna get that joke? No. Yeah. No. Does no one did no one ever watch Animaniacs growing up? No. Yo, y'all make me feel so old. All right. Pinky and the Brain was a part of the Animaniacs. They're a really funny little duo. They're stupid. They actually just got revamped last year, very end of last year. Still, all right. Brain one we have, this is the uh, good reader. Someone who is good at reading. Whenever they read, it all just seems to make sense to them as they're going. <clears throat> this is you. What happens is as reading goes into you, let's say like this, as you start reading, what happens inside of your brain, at first you have an understanding check. You understand. Little check there. All of the, from your understanding, you know the word say. From there, your imagination takes hold of it. That's a little check. Once your imagination, once you, your brain has read it, you understand it, your imagination takes hold of it, and you have a little picture. You have a little movie that plays in your head. You have your characters move around, things like that. Just a couple little stick figures as we go along. That looks kind of weird. Give a couple little stick figures. Your image in your brain pops up, and you watch the movie of what you are reading. That's generally what happens. Let's make sure that we're looking up here and not on our computers. Thank you very much. There's nothing right now you should be looking up. This is what happens in most people's brains. Those of you who are good at reading, this is what happens. The reading goes into your brain. You have an understanding of what you're reading. Your imagination allows you to envision the movie of what's happening, of what you're reading. This is a lot of people. This is what a lot of y'all are like, but not everybody. Sometimes this does not happen. And when that happens, we go over to brain two here, we have a little bit of a change. Once reading goes into your brain, and this might be you, once reading goes in, your understanding, or your understand, We'll just call it. You might think, oh yeah, I understood what I read, but whenever your imagination takes hold of it, everything goes a little bit wonky. From there, you might have one image going over here, and another larger image over here. Oh, but these, you remember, oh, this, this happened too. And then this happened as well. You're left with this really weird mismatch, and you don't understand what what. Happened where? When did it happen? And why did it happen? Your brain goes a little bit fuzzy in some way, in some areas. This is a big issue for a lot of y'all. What you need to do to fix this, and what we're going to give you to practice to fix this, is we're going to work on the understanding bit, because that's where we actually ended up messing up. You could read every single word perfectly, probably, but whenever it went into your brain, you didn't fully understand it. This is why, whenever we are reading together, I usually make you stop. And I actually make, I ask you a question every once in a while, or I point something out, or we'll get the map out and see where people are, where they're moving. This is to help your understanding of the story and where things are going, how the plot is working. This is what we're going to work on today, but individually. You're going to be reading through the passage of today. It's only a five-page um, chapter. It's very, very short. But we have designed and created a number of questions to help you along as you read. So as you read, you're going to have to stop and answer a question as you read, as you keep going. This is to help your understanding so you know exactly what's happening in each different section of the story. This allows your imagination to take hold of it and go, now that I know what's happening with each of these sections, now I can envision it. Now it can be like a picture in my head as I go along and read the story. This is what it takes to get good at reading comprehension. The only way is to practice, practice, and practice. That means you have to read, read, and read until you get to a point where whenever you read, it's perfectly natural. Instead of just having a movie playing in your head, you look like you're inside the story. You can see everything happening as you go along. This takes a lot of practice with reading. It takes a lot of imagination, imagination and it makes, you need to make sure that you understand the story by itself. If you don't understand the story, you're not going to get the right image in your head, and you're not going to remember anything. This is reading comprehension skills, and that's what we're going to be working on today. 
So ladies and gents, from here on out, what you're going to be doing individually is you're going to be reading through chapter 11 by yourselves. As you read, you're going to have questions to answer as you go. Y'all, Do y'all have any questions before you start? All right, ladies and gents. So, remember y'all, one of the ways that I help you out when it comes to reading comprehension, just by me reading, is I put color into my reading. I actually make sure to give the characters different voices and things like that. I make sure to describe things in interesting ways as we're going. This, in fact, is a really good comprehension tool to help you. Do the same thing for yourself. Don't just read so bland and boring as you go. Give yourself some color with your characters. Imagine what would your character look like and how would they sound. This is to help you with your reading comprehension and your understanding and eventually to your imagination. All right? Those are the steps I want you to take today. As you read, make sure that you are answering those questions as you go along. Generally speaking, it's taken most of my students roughly 40 minutes, which is the perfect amount of time we have in class. After you have your uh, do your reading, you have your journal, as always. And that should be about enough time for all of us that we need to get done, since we also have our break at around 11 o'clock. All right, ladies and gents, that's it. Go ahead and get started. If you have your computers, you can go get started with your reading and your questions.